Hi, hi. Now we have a new chapter of Dr. Stone. This one is called Men of Forensics. The last chapter ended in intense tragedy, in, in uh, really a shocking advancement of the plot from, like, it was already at a comfortable 60 miles per hour, I would say, this plot. Now we've ratcheted it up to, like, 600. The villain is there with them on the island. The entire crew, minus the landing party, has been petrified. The petrification beam technology is thus somewhere on this island as well. This is something that they had planned on journeying perhaps all the way to Antarctica to find, um, but instead feels like it just could all happen now? Like, what else? What? Uh, I, I'm so shocked. I'm... <coughs> I'm a little sick, but mostly I'm shocked. Like, what more can happen in this series now that everything is within their grasp? And yet, it feels like the, the biggest conflict of the series is still to emerge. Because, of course, this is the person responsible for everything that now they're dealing with. This is a person with technological powers that probably surpass even Senkyu's, or at least has some sort of petrification rating. Right? So I'm sure Y-Man or whoever this is isn't going to go down easily. But, I, I mean, I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked that, uh, that so much is happening so fast. I really hope the series isn't ending. Okay, but let's see. All right, so, again, shocked, drops his spyglass, having just witnessed the atrocity that has taken place. The entire crew petrified. Again, runs over. To tell Senkyu in this awesome dialogueless page, we see Senkyu with an expression I don't think I've ever seen on him before. One of absolute righteous fury. One that seems to both be engaging his cheat code level intelligence and yet also the full strength of his heart, his full resolve and, and power going in to this one determined. Kaku runs off. This is she. <laughs> trying to stop me. We need to save the eyes now. These are some pretty silly facial expressions for such a tragic scene. Everyone aboard the ship is zapped. In front of poor survivors, if we rush out without thinking, the enemy petrifies us too. It's game over. And I saw the statues on the ship. Some traumatic memories came rushing back. I was taken from the island as a baby. Oh boy. Okay, so. You're running from whoever or whatever turns people into stone. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So the stone, the petrification man has been living on this island now for at least, I would guess that Soyuz here is in his early 20s or something, so let's say 20 years. 20 years this person has spent here. Doing what? Doing why? Literally why, man? <laughs> why, why are you, uh, why... Don't you have other plans? Don't you have other things you... Like, what was the point of all of this? I'm going to petrify the world. I'm going to de-petrify myself at some point in the future. Also, this is interesting because Senku hadn't woken up yet. And for a while, I was trying to figure out, like, so how did Y-Man, who petrified everyone... It's just, we're just running with that. De-petrify himself, and, and why? <laughs> and I thought that it must have been in reaction somehow to Senkyu de-petrifying, that, like, he somehow had some system set up to, to de-petrify himself under those conditions. But now that we know that Soyuz, as a baby, was running from the petrification man, that must mean that he had de-petrified himself long before Senkyu de-petrified himself. So, his plan is, as far as I can tell, petrify the entire world, petrify myself until some arbitrary, arbitrary date into the future. Like, uh, who knows why. De-petrify myself. Drive everyone off of this island. Or petrify them. It seems like probably a lot of other people that were living on this island. <coughs> oh my gosh, excuse me. Because remember there was like the 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 sea floor was like covered in, in human statues. So why? 
<laughs> drive everyone off off of this island, then just live there for like 20 plus years. More people show up. I'm going to try to petrify them too. Like, what, what is all of this for? Okay, all right, whatever. There's also potential allies trying to avoid the same fate. Okay. This is an interesting spread. If in a single native of this island, they can directly list to the treasure test for question. That will allow us to revive our friends on the ship as well as all of humanity. And here we see that potential ally. She's gathering up the uh, seashells that require, that you're, you, you need for the uh, depetrification formula. Who knows if they've come as far as using the platinum as a catalytic converter, but whatever. Interesting, interesting. Shells seem to form a trail. Carrying them is discarding selfish that are dead or hard to eat. Oh, wait, she's just eating them? Or is she using them to, hmm. Instead of wandering around trying to find the treasure chest, this person can provide first 10 billion times quicker. Let's find them. We can catch up since they passed by here less than half an hour ago. You know that for sure. Ah! Nice, nice fly. I love poop. That's what the fly is saying. Not me. Not me. The fly is saying that. I quoted the fly. I just want to make that clear. It's puny island. They zero in on rotting shellfish in no time flat. If the flies are just showing up for the party, they must have just been discarded. Right, right. Painstakingly dealt step by step forensic heroics. Science will help us track down on a person of interest. Oh, fun. Surprisingly fun, given that the an unprecedentedly tragic tragedy has happened <laughs> and uh, they're, they're, the fate of all their friends are in grave danger. Now we're having a nice little police investigation arc. I'm, I'm fine with it. I, I, I don't think that this series is serving its best interest by ever getting too tonally down on itself. It's all about that joy and and excitement and creativity of, of science, of, of applying scientific principles. So I feel like it would really undermine itself if it ever got too dour, if it ever got too sad. So yeah, they're just off again. All right, it's time. It's this adhesive. It's called cyanoacrylate. Heat it up, let it steam at the shell, sign a black light on it, and our evidence appears. Fingerprints. Ooh. I can guess a little bit about them. Female, average weight, average height. Really? Male and female fingerprints are different? That is news to me. I feel like I don't even... Oh, they're there. <laughs> I was like, I don't think I even have fingerprints. But I literally just needed to look closer to see the detail of it. Of course I have fingerprints. Why would I not have fingerprints? I just hadn't thought to look at my fingerprints in who knows how long. Anyways, average weight, average height. Fantastic work, science detective. Slack job praise for like a mentalist detective. This is where you come in, start profiling. Purely theoretical, I believe our suspect is a young woman. Young woman. An experienced elder wouldn't waste precious energy picking up worthless shells, picking and choosing after, so, after collecting so lackadaisically. Seems far too inefficient for an older woman. Ah, aha. So we went a few friends to the beach before selecting which shells to keep her toss. Mmm, ah, ooh, ah. All right, this is really fun. This is like, uh, I, I, I wasn't really sure where they could possibly go with this, but this is some interesting psychological reads. I love that. I, it reminds me of um, certain scenes in Monster, where, you, where uh, you remember that series Monster? And he's like recreating the crimes. And he's kind of like noticing, well, oh, they must have like hesitated here. What were they looking at when they hesitated? You know? So this idea of like, they, she started discarding the shells after coming from the beach a bit, which means that probably at first she intended to take all of them and then was like, oh, she's too heavy. Let's, let's toss and sort. Now, that, that kind of read is really cool to me. Um, I don't know, just really kind of trying to put yourself in someone else's shoes very literally, allowing yourself to have the full sensory experience of what's happening in their lives and thinking, you know, all right, so not just like what did they do, 
but why did they do it and what can this say about what other things they might be doing? This is cool. This is cool. All right. So, 160 centimeters tall. If someone that height was walking past here, they got it. A young woman's hair. Wow. All right. He snagged one. He looks hella creepy on this page. Saying, voila, a young woman's hair with that cheeky little grin of his, but uh, we'll take it. Excuse me. Let's take this evidence. Toss it in a centrifuge. All right, yep. There's our centrifuge. It's Kohaku, of course. Going full on helicopter. They didn't need to make that hot air balloon. They just needed Kohaku to twirl something around, and eventually she'll lift off off the ground. Muscle-powered centrifuge separated the various particles into layers. What I'm after is the pollen layer. Leveling up our layers means whipping this up as a breeze. A little microscope. Cool. Lily pollen. Lilies don't grow by the seashore. Our suspect must live inland on the mountain. It's crazy. This is, that's actually so cool. No trail at Senku and Gun can't follow. No suspect that can evade us. Yeah, this is great. And I like that all of their powers are coming together, along with Soyuz's memories of his brief time on this island. This is nice. The rest is simple. We just use a pre-existing trail and extrapolate a route towards the mountain. It's more than enough for me. All right. Kalagi just runs off. There's no way they can keep up with her. So I sure hope she doesn't do anything stupid. Oh, oh, oh. Down there. A descendant that tribe of final survivors, the tribe that Ishigami Village branched off from. Enemy or ally. It's still a possibility that this is the culprit of petrified our shipmates. Gonna make contact and make some answers. We have no choice. Oh my god, the chapter's gonna end. Right before they talk to her, isn't it? I know it is. That's fine. They'll just wait another week. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. I, I love that first she was shown in silhouette, and then we see her from behind. And is there a clue here, perhaps? Is there something we can glean from this additional detail? I'm not sure. Oh, oh, oh. Power of science we finally found. The key to reviving all of humanity. A resident of Treasure Island. There she is. Interesting, interesting. Does she have no hair on the top of her head? She shaved off the top of her head. Or is that just the top of a little headdress thing? I, I don't know. <laughs> Whoa! What exactly have we stumbled upon? Interesting. Okay. All right. All right. Well, again, tonally, it's all over the map. I thought this would be a chapter of mourning and of, of steely resolution. That was literally just one panel of thank you, looking super pissed off. And that's all we need. Really, that's all we need. To just know that this is now super serious business. And then, because we know it, that deep down it actually is super serious business, it can go right back into the, the wacky over-the-top faces and, and feeling of, of hope and excitement and, and mystique and, and all the things that we love from this series. So I think that's really great. This reminds me a lot of One Piece. Uh, which maybe shouldn't be surprised given that they've sailed to a treasure island. <laughs> um, but just that kind of feeling of in One Piece where Oda really likes to kind of like front load a lot of the plot elements. Um, I, I'm thinking of like Skypiea specifically when they first land in Skypiea and it's just like all of this crazy shit is happening. You really have no idea what any of this could mean. It seems clear that there's like many, many tribes and factions all kind of dealing with their own problems. And you're like, what are we even doing here? Like, what what is the plan, literally? Um, this kind of has the same feel. Obviously, things are just progressing on their own here. We have no idea what's going on. Uh, but but uh, in time, we'll find out. And look, they all have lilies. You see? And um, that's symbolic of sapphic relationships so um anyways all right <laughs> uh clearly my analysis is failing here so we will uh wait until next week